This is Additive Scene Manager. An Additive Scene Manager helps out with the loading, reloading, and onloading of additive and asynchronous scenes in Unity 5. So if you're working with the Unity Scene Manager and the Scene Management class, specifically load scene async, which loads the scene asynchronously, and you want to load scenes additively with your asynchronous scene, or if you're working with async operations, and you want to, for example, have easier control over the allow scene activation bool, then this tool makes all of this easier. It makes loading, onloading, and reloading additive asynchronous scenes a lot easier. It comes with a set of functions right here. You can load a single scene. You can load a single scene with control over the allow scene activation boolean. And again, that is, that is this here. You can load a, an array of scene names. So that will load all of these scenes additively and asynchronously. And then you can load the uh, an array of scenes with control over the allow scene activation boolean. You can unload a single scene. And it will not be unloaded if it's a persistent scene. And that is set via the inspector. I'll cover that in just a moment. You'll see right here, you can set scenes to be persistent. And that means that when you're calling these load and onload functions, the scene will not be unloaded or reloaded if you have set it to be persistent. So you can unload a single scene, you can unload an array of scenes, you can unload all scenes. And that doesn't make sense, of course, unless you consider that persistent scenes will not be unloaded. So any, anything you've said is persistent will not get unloaded. You can unload all scenes and pass in a, a, an exception. And that exception is a scene name. And so if I say unload all scenes except level one. So you can pass in an exception. Everything else will be unloaded. You can unload all scenes with a with an array of an, an exception. So a, a whole array of scenes will not be unloaded. Everything else will. And then of course there's the reload scene and pass in a single name, it'll reload the scene. And there's reload scenes where you can pass in an array of scenes to be reloaded. Now there's a good demo if you're new to, to coding. Uh, and this demo actually shows you how to use the scene controller script with uh, the nice custom inspector here. And you can use this system without any coding knowledge. Um, although it would, it helps of course, and a lot of the tutorials on the channel get into coding, but here we have a demo and, and a way to use this without any coding knowledge. So you'll see I have a game set up here with one scene that has the camera which is the you know the player object and this example is kind of set up as a first person game which works good for VR or a, you know first first person game and so the player and the camera are kind of one and the same here and then the Sun is a separate is a separate scene and just the directional light is in that scene and then there's seven other scenes which represent, you know, each one of these rooms is a separate scene. However, uh, this also would be the way you would set up level one, level two, level three. And as you go between the levels, only the ones that are visible will be loaded. So you'll see because, because I'm in the room A, room B is the only one which is visible because of this doorway. So only room B is loaded. And as I walk into uh, room B, and I can see on the game controller all which uh, scenes are currently loaded, but as I walk into room B, you'll see that it loads up all of the visible scenes. So here I am in room B. Because there's four doorways, one, two, three, four, it's loaded up those four scenes uh, because they're, they're visible from this one. So to get that set up again without any coding, all you have to do is 
add a, a trigger. So I see the big green uh, trigger here. And I've added the additive scene trigger script. And then I've set a visible scene. So because uh, in room A, the only visible scene is room B, which is this one. When you are in that scene, only this visible scene will be loaded. Now, if I look at the room B and I look at that trigger object, I'll see that there's four visible scenes, uh, including room A, the one that I'm in now. So, of course, when I walk into that room, because I've set four visible scenes, those scenes will be loaded. Let's take a little, clo little bit closer look at the added at the scene controller class. So if I go to my game controller object, I've added the scene controller script to it. And at the top you have scenes to load at start. And if you populate this with uh, any scenes, those scenes will be loaded automatically at the start. So it's gonna load player camera or it's gonna at least check to make sure it's already loaded. Then it's gonna load the sun and then it's gonna load room A. So if I hit play, I'll see that the loaded scenes down here is the player camera, sun, room A, and room B. And that's all that's loaded here. Now room B is loaded because if you look at the room A scene trigger, you'll see that the visible scene is room B. So when I load the game and I go into here, because I'm because room A is loaded automatically by the scene controller, I then go into this trigger which tells it that room B is visible, so then room B is loaded. So you can actually see that happen right at the beginning. You'll see room B if I unload all of these levels. So let me just unload that. This is kind of how it would be when you build it. And when you hit play, you'll see the first three loaded, and then you'll see room B pop into place there because it's it's been loaded essentially by room A. Let me reload these scenes. So I'm not going to go over, I guess, how to use these functions because they're very self-explanatory in your game. Just go ahead and call whatever load, unload, or reload you need to use. Uh, again, if you don't want to use any of those, then check out the demo, and you would need to add the scene controller script to your, to your project, and that's covered in the documentation. If we come up here, um, it says add a game controller add the scene controller script to it. This explains how the scene controller script works. You can set which scenes you want to have loaded automatically at the start. You can set scenes to be persistent, which won't be unloaded as you go throughout the levels. And then in each one of your levels, just add a game object with a trigger on it and set which scenes are visible from that level and then when you hit play the scenes you've set to load automatically will be loaded automatically and whichever trigger you go into it will load the visible scenes from there so that should give a out-of-the-box way to get additive asynchronous scenes into your project uh, where you can load only what should be visible from from the triggers you set and it should load and unload everything as you walk in between those scenes now this last quick part is just for uh, previous owners of additive scene manager if you have used this previously some of these functions were named load level like this so if you upgrade this from a version that was 1.3 or older then you, and you used the load level, you'll just have to go in and rename that to load scene. 
the level word has been taken out of all the functions and it's been replaced with scene because that makes more sense uh, so just a quick note for anyone upgrading make sure that you update your function names and if you're you were using the onload level previously the onload level onloaded all levels and there's been a name there's been a change here so now if you want to unload all levels you call onload all scenes and if you want to unload a single scene you can you call onload scene or you call onload scenes which directly unloads what you pass in and if you want to unload everything you call onload all scenes or onload all scenes with the exception now anytime you upgrade additive scene manager make sure you don't overwrite your settings file if I look at uh, if I look at my scene controller I have all these settings uh, that I've set the, the scenes that I want to load my persistent scenes and I don't want to lose those settings when I upgrade so so when you go ahead and do an upgrade for example right now I'm upgrading from 1.3 to, to the 1.4 package and it says that there's new updates in all these files you need to deselect the resources folder because this scene controller settings is your scene controller settings and you don't want to overwrite those with what comes out with, with what comes from the demo so make sure you deselect the resources folder that this is not checked and then go ahead and do your import and that way you won't overwrite your scene controller settings all right, I hope this pack helps you out a lot. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.